guy from Hip Hop News Uncensored. And sitting beside me is my co host. What it do? What's good? It's your brother Sam Ant. Viral Hip Hop News. We are in a building. Another episode of the Unset the True Podcast. Oh God, what's yeah. good, my brother? What up? What up, man? We in the house, man. The most underrated, most underappreciated podcast in the world right now. The Uncensored Truth Podcast. Come on with that straight heat today. We got a nice little lineup today, Sam, man. I cannot wait to get to it tomorrow night also. I'm excited man, about that. Man, don't give them too much, oh God. Not don't yet. give them too Not much, yet. man. We ain't, gonna, we ain't going to get too busy, man. We got an exciting yeah. lineup like old God said, man. It's a pack one this evening, so we're going to get it popping real, real quick. Yeah. Shout out to everybody on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play for your listening pleasure. And, of course, on Vile Hip Hop News, Hip Hop News Uncensored, and the Uncensored Shoot Podcast official channel, where it is going down live at tomorrow. I think we made that decision, right? Oh, God, my bad to cut the music off. But we're going right. live on uh, Uncensored Shoot Podcast. Yeah, for that right? one. Yeah. It's going down. We got in the mud over there. We got, we're going to finish it off. Let's get over dirty. there. So we're going to do that. Y'all see that, mm -hmm. you know, on that channel, man. And, um, yeah, man, um, it's quite a lineup today. So I'm just going to get to it and do it. Be brief y'all real quick. Uh, R. Kelly, R. Kelly, man, is alleged that there's a new sex tape out there with a minor with R. Kelly. We're going to talk about Kenyatta Griggs and Dame Dash. Dame Dash apologizing to Leo Cohen and a host of other people. Also, Boosie, rapper Little Boosie, weighing in on a Takashi 6 9 snitch the snitch you know what i mean mm. also ti you know um leaving a little meme up about Flo floyd mayweather today we're going to talk about that and dropping a dish track also 50 cent burns a gucci um shirt right on the air also steve harvey we're going to talk about steve harvey and uh monique you know their little exchange on the show the other day so yeah man that and some other things that I, we got a long a, a long list to get to today, man. Yeah, Anyways. man. Let's get right to it, man. What we got first on the list, I believe. Yeah, I know what we're right on the list, man. Well, yeah, I'm actually gonna start with the Dame Dash. Yeah, we gotta start with that yeah. one. Just get that one, you know, out now. Um, we you know, Dame Dash, first of all, dropped a video the other day on uh Dame Dash Network where he pretty much apologized to Jay-Z, uh Kareem Biggs, Burke, Leo Cohen, and uh Steve Stout. You know what I mean? And we did our podcast. And we spoke about it, though we're very reluctant to do so. And we put our opinions out there. And um, the next day, Kenyatta, you know, uh, um, we found out that he echoed some of the same sentiments that we felt. So I'm going to play a little bit of what Kenyatta said on his channel, Hip Hop Motivation. But you can see the whole video in the description box right at the top there. But I'm going to play a little bit. And we're going to talk about this. Here, man, here we go. Kenyatta Griggs, Hip Hop Motivation. Make sure you all subscribe to his channel. Yo, this is Kenyatta. Hip hop motivator, and uh, today I want to talk to you guys about my thoughts on Damon Dash's apology. You know, you know, me and Dame been doing this culture culture things thing for a minute, hip hop motivation for the last five years. You know, it's you know, it's it's interesting to me. You know, I was a little confused when I saw it. Um, I'm all for an apology. I'm all for brothers connecting the dots, coming back together, making things work, if that's what you really gonna do. But, you know, I didn't really feel like the timing of everything was good based on, they just had like a little Rock Nation brunch or whatever that was called, where everybody was together, which is cool. You know, um, I felt like it was more of a, emotional move more than anything else. I don't feel like it was well thought out. I don't think it was a strategic move. You know, obviously there must be some other reason why, you know, he would even apologize to Leo Cohen or Steve Stout, which is disrespectful to my work, you know, that I did writing this book because Kenyatta is not a person that deals with faith. I don't deal with lies. I don't deal with, 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 with false accusations on any level. You know what I'm saying? I try to more than anything else come with the truth because I know people been lied to too much already in society. So, you know, why bring forth information that's not truthful? And I believe everything in this culture vultures book. It's truthful. I know I sat with Dane for years. He told me these stories. I heard these stories even when the cameras weren't rolling. So I don't really believe that what he was saying was not the truth. 
All right, so I'm actually going to stop it right there. Now, once again, this is, is in reference to Dame Dash on his network apologizing mm -hmm. to notably yeah. Leor Cohen and Steve Stout. People, if you had the uh, Culture Vultures book, he put them on blast in that book pretty much, called them, um, you know what I mean, Thieves of the Culture. So um, obviously, if you've seen the video there on the screen, you see the hurt. You know, you sent this to me late last night, and I woke up this morning, a lot of people were sending me this video. You know, do you see this? Do you see this? But yeah, man, um, Sam, man, what do you think about, uh, you know, Kenyatta Griggs responding to Dame Dash at this point? Well, I mean, when we did the video, when we first saw it, we saw it even a day before we did the video. And immediately we were both reluctant. We didn't even talk about why. We just were both kind of like, damn. Mm -hmm. And then the next day came and we obviously had to address the situation. And we still were very gun shy. And the reason why is because of that dude right there, Kenyatta Griggs. We're cool with him. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with the podcast, he's been on here numerous times. He we, He's a very, very good dude, down to earth, thorough brother, and did not deserve to get the treatment that he got by Dame Dash, point blank, period. Out of respect for him, we had to make sure that we talked to him first before we properly went and dug in on this right. situation because right. we didn't know what was going on in his head, what was going on between him and Dame Dash um, when he came to that apology. Right. Talked to him yesterday, got the green light, let him know we both supported him, everything was Gucci, everything was cool, and that we were going to talk about it today. He gave us the green light to really go in. Dame Dash was on some fuck shit to a, a hundred percent. It was no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people out here trying to say that it may have been a publicity stunt. He was playing. Fuck that. You're a grown man. Mm -hmm. That ain't something you play with. Mm -hmm. The Culture Vulture book, read the book. And one of the first things that jumped out in my head is, damn, this isn't just a bashing of Leo Cohen, Steve Stout and all the other Culture Vultures. This is a self-help motivation book. Right. The person who wrote that self-help and motivation was Kenyatta Griggs. He was the backbone, life, and soul of that book. Dame Dash's name, popularity, pushed the book. It was beautiful, even flow. It was a nice balance. It was supposed to happen. This hurts, man. Yeah, it hurt me to yeah. watch the video. Yeah. It hurt me the fact that people were now going to throw credibility or, or throw shame on a brother's credibility who doesn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. it, it it's it's it makes me sick to even know that. Dame Dash could even potentially apologize to Leo Cohen and Steve Stout and the other ones and, and throw De and Kenyatta Griggs under the bus when mm -hmm. he's not even this yeah. is some Hollywood shit. And we, we speak on that. Yeah, it kind of throws away, you know, not to, again. That book is, is a great book. I suggest that everybody go get that book, you know, Culture Vultures. But um, it kind of does throw it away. You know what I mean? Because it's like you got that book. I mean, was like, like that was everything. You know, what I mean, for people like us and people coming up, because it's like we always kind of been getting like the short end of the stick when it comes to every you know industry. So now it's like, OK, now let's do it independent. So now you got people, you know, coming up, young kids and stuff that we're teaching now to do the independent thing to be entrepreneurs to the guy who's steam to, to the lead in this. Because even my mom would tell me like, yo, like I like Dame and what he stands for. Boom, boom, boom. So when your mom telling you stuff like that, it's just like you can't help but to follow a guy like that. And see what he did with Rocke Rockefeller, you know, and that the big fortune that they amassed and for him to stand on independence so strong and to apologize for what? Why do you apologize if you're right? Now, a lot of people were alluding to is maybe because of the YouTube thing. And my thing is, it ain't all like that. No, Come on, it ain't got nothing to do with the YouTube thing. I mean, it is what it is with that. OK, you start another channel. You know what I mean? If they take your channel. But I don't see Dame doing it like that with YouTube anyway. But um, yeah, definitely hurts. Um, Other people are saying that he wants to get back in the circle with them and all that. I don't know about that. You get them private. You don't do that right, shit on right. no you hit camera. Him up. You hit them up privately on, like, like, like everybody, you know, it was pretty much alluding to, you know, um, in the comments. And once you go public and make it public, now it's like, what's your agenda? So I feel bad, man. And that's why, you know, I value our partnership because we know we won't do no nutty shit like that. We would never jeopardize what we got going on for an pop Nah. So, you know, you got to pick your partners wisely, I think. And I want to see. I know they will. Kenyatta and Dame Dash, you know, iron it out. Hopefully Dame puts out a statement, you know, and clarifies that, you know, sometime soon. But um, that, that that's rough. But again, brothers like me, you and other brothers got to pick up the mantle. Sometimes people get in position and they burn out. They get a certain age and they give up. We've seen that. I'm going to ask a professional question to you, old guy. Is it to a point right now where Dame Dash can't simply be trusted when it comes to valuing a motherfucking friendship and relationship? Mm. Because far too often, as we've seen him burn brothers that we've seen from a distance seem good, Biggs, Burt, Jay-Z, 
Rockefeller, that like dang, and, and then you see what they're doing now. It's like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. there was something to that. And we personally know Kenyatta. What the fuck is going on with Dame? Is it just to the point where he just needs to be around Dame? Is it just he might not it might be in Kenyatta's best interest not even to mess with that? And I'm not trying to throw fuel in the fire. Like mm -hmm. I said, Kenyatta may see this is all out of respect, but this is more so on Dame here. Right. Green light. So can he be trusted? Well, I, I wouldn't go to that far to say that you know the trust factor. You know, um, and though a lot of people will say that that's bullshit, they say, no, nah, you can't trust them. I wouldn't go that far. I think that they still have a great relationship and still will. But um, some people are just out for themselves. And sometimes you see that, you know, with certain things and they have to be controlled of certain situations. And if they're not, you know what I mean, then they get uncomfortable with that. So, um, you know, it's a reason why he wanted to go do his own independent thing. But I mean, a lot of people, you look at the net worth thing and that came up, you know, over and over. You know, once you do your research, you will see that he was um, at a point in time worth negative two million. A businessman, you will have to ask yourself a question like, why would anybody, you know, follow somebody who's worth negative two million? You have to ask yourself that question. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. Um, and you see the people again that he left. They continuously going up, continuously getting more businesses title. You know what I mean? Continuously doing more things. So not to throw shade his way, but. It is what it is. You know what I mean? I, I, I appreciate, you know, um, what Dame does independently, but that all, doesn't always translate into, you know, net worth, obviously. Oh, I'll, I'll attest to that. I'm going to leave the conversation like this. Kenyatta Griggs, go follow him on Hip Hop Motivation. Go follow The Secret to Balling. Go get the movie. Support this brother, man. He has a lot of great things going on. Mm -hmm. He has Culture Vulture 2 he was working on. He was talking about, unfortunately, maybe throwing down a drain. Let's get in his comment section. Let's motivate that brother to keep that book going because it's needed. You know, a lot of thorough people in the industry that you can make that book come alive. And well, you did I apologize it on your to own a thief, though, culture. Sam, man. Why well, apologize to a thief? I don't Somebody, have an answer to that it's question. Crazy. It's crazy. I really do Now, now no, I'm going I'm to talk on this, too, to add this into it because there's so many different, you know, um, thoughts about why this happened. A lot of people are saying that he may, may have been under some duress, maybe that his family was threatened you know, or, you know, something. Do you buy into that at all, that he had to make an apology? You also heard something else, you know, where it is on the street, you know, that um, you, you can speak on that as well. But what do you think about that, though, the threat? Think he was threatened? I don't, I don't, I don't, nah, I don't think he was threatened, but it does, it's not too far-fetched. Now, a lot of people are saying he said too much on that Nick Cannon, and you know how those conspiracy theories start flying, and a lot we read into, and a lot you can't, you know what I mean? So, um, I, I don't think this would be a situation where he was threatened any worse before. You calling out right. some of the top music people in the industry and you straight up vulturing and you promoting independence and you got the world at you and you don't care. You laughing it off. I think all the threats already came his way. Mm -hmm. And I think if it was a threat coming from Jay-Z, I don't see Dame Dash being the dude that was quivering in a corner with people around him. And I think that was a publicity stunt. I think it was I, either it was a publicity stunt or it may have been something more. Now, in the barbershop, they're talking about he may have gotten barbershop talk. This is relevant. Let's talk about it. They were saying that he might have had to get rid of Kenyatta. Mm. And you brought up a good point in the conversation in the in the pre-production meeting where it's like some of them Hollywood motherfuckers just don't want real people around. Nope. They're afraid. They're scared to death of real people. And the first dude, the immediate reaction we got from the conversation with Kenyatta is that's a real dude. Definitely. That's a real dude. And he's Definitely. quiet about it. He ain't out here boasting. He ain't out here showboating. He could flash a lot more. He could mm -hmm. do a lot more, and he's not. He's a humble guy, but he's very real. And I don't know, man. They don't like that. We've yeah. seen that. I mean, we'll, we'll let the chips fall where they may. Again, you know, Dame Dash, you know, um, May, you know, hopefully he leaves a statement. But um, the way Kenyatta was talking, it kind of seems like, you know, he must. they're going to probably move in separate directions, you know what I mean, at this point. And, and then sometimes, you know, it's a healthy thing. You know, you've been with that girl or whatever, and y'all been – you know, to, to the to the top, to the bottom together. And it's just like sometimes it's time to, you know, part ways. But um, I think that they have a lot, had, should have a lot more. That, I mean, the Coach of Vultures book was just a foundation that could be built on so much more. And mm -hmm. it could turn into, you know, whatever they wanted to turn into to apologize. And it, it, it almost, you know, makes you seem like we got to just bow down and make it. Like if we don't bow down, if, like if nobody can stand up and do it on their own. You want to have to bow down and take their money or do what they say. Almost like the Steve Harvey. We'll get to that, you know, in a second mm -hmm. in Monique, you know, conversation. So I don't like that, man. You know what I mean? At all. And, um, you know, I guess other people got to step up and be those, you know, those leaders because some guys just give up. Yeah, man. I heard you. Yes, sir.
That's what yes, I got sir. on that, definitely. Yes, sir. But you're tuned into the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Oh God, and Sam, man, going in today on this Thursday. Everybody listening to this channel, I need you to do me a favor. Hit that like button and make sure that you share this video. All right, man, this is crazy right here. This story came out just a couple hours ago, and it's involving R. Kelly. Sam, man, you're not going to believe this one. Now, a lawyer, you know, named Michael N. Ev Nadi claimed that he uncovered a sex tape with R. Kelly with an underage girl. Now, according to CNN, a new video is 42 minutes long and it includes clips of R. Kelly and that girl um, pretty much preferring to her body parts as being 14 years old. Now, the lawyer did say he handed over the tape to Chicago's Cook County office last weekend. And um, this does not look good at all sam and i mean um a crazy situation um now that it's in the hands of law enforcement anything can happen at this point what do you think about this uh this videotape sam man now allegedly you know r kelly with a 14 year old girl now what do you think about that man if and no i'm not even gonna say if when this video releases if it's r kelly on that video then he's done and he's done because they're not gonna let him go again mm -hmm. They had the tape earlier on. They let him go. If they have him on tape again, they're not. That's not happening. And he's done. Right. It's nothing yeah. else more simple yeah. than that. And he deserves to be done. Right. Now we sat here and been on the fence, and not even on the fence. We've been objective in our commentary, not playing one side or the other, mm -hmm. giving real commentary to the fact that uh, pedophilia, molestation, rape. It's absolutely disgusting and vile, but we also have to understand that you're innocent until proven guilty. We have to make sure all the evidence is out. We have to make sure that we don't have any narrative stared any certain ways. Mm -hmm. Just got to look at it from a 360 degree spectrum. Excuse me. We got a lot of flack for it from either side that didn't agree with us, but it was what it was. We stayed objective. If there's a tape out, uh, another one, mm -hmm. and his face is on it, he's done, and he deserves to be done. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, R. Kelly's lawyer did, you know, he put out a statement. You know, today, Stephen Greenberg, he says, we are unaware of any new information involving Mr. Kelly. We have not been contacted by anyone. We have not been informed about any new information by anyone. And we have not been contacted by law enforcement. This is um, as of earlier today um, by way of XXL. Now, there's a, a whole document out there that we will make available, you know, for people um, to read. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty crazy, man. And let me, let's just put out and say this right now. It's only a media headline. Right. We don't know. Until right, we start right. seeing things and concrete things and, and people start getting arrested and we start seeing some real action, this is nothing more than hearsay. So we got to be careful about that. So mm -hmm. all of this is if. Mm -hmm. These are if statements. If this right. is, then this. If this is, then this. Because we really don't know at this point. We just speculate. Right, right, right. And it's just weird, you know, after the, uh, you know, the docuseries, you know, now um, this, the alleged, the supposed witch hunt people were saying, now an alleged tape comes out now we remember he did get away with the first one mm -hmm. even though a lot of people said yeah that was him mm -hmm. you know what i mean a second time i really don't see it happening i think that this could be the end you know of r kelly you know he will be locked up i think um if they could prove that is him if it even looks remotely close to him at this point it might just be over they were talking about a couple months ago we were talking about the whole thing that they were trying to bring up charges for some victims of the docu series that that kind of fell you know through um but yeah this could be real serious right here man gut reaction is it our tape do you think there do you think there is some concrete evidence that the authorities have right now and if so what do you think the next move is do you think they're moving on r kelly or i mean mm -hmm. what do you yeah well they're saying it's the vhs video vh8 vhs excuse me videotape okay. which i mean it's pretty pretty old yeah. but um you know um we're gonna see you know what i'm saying i, I don't know I, I really don't know i mean I think, you know, within the next 24 to 48 hours, I mean, if they had to tape for a week, you would think that they would, you know, I guess they're probably, you know, doing more investigation, trying to talk to people and get people in. But if this is real, if this is real, R. Kelly will be locked up and they probably won't give him a bell at this point. Let me ask you a question. Morality, we all know, is discussing and, and just is absolutely at the bottom from a legality standpoint. And correct me for my ignorance, but is it um, statute of limitations? To that if it was 20 years ago or somebody years ago would it matter if they mm -hmm. seen something on tape i'm not sure that's what i'm saying i'm not i'm not sure so i mean yeah, yeah i don't i'm, I'm not i know, sure I know certain like um i know new york different states are different i know new york just passed the law yeah you know where people can now you know um come back after a certain amount of years um and, and come after people but 
you know, I think it's a state by state thing. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure. Child porn, maybe if they have her saying admitting that she was underage on tape with him, maybe they can get him or something like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely could be charged with sexual assault. But again, yeah. um, he did beat the case before, yeah. and that was a re recent tape at the time, right? Like it wasn't like it was old. It was pretty recent. Like it happened yeah, it during the wild. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I, you know, um, we're gonna have to wait, man. It's real, real limited information. You know, this is a prominent attorney. Um, he has a Twitter account, Michael um, Avnati. You know, he's putting information out all day about this. So the um, guy that put the tape, gave the tape, the, to the lawyer. Authorities. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's an attorney who um, who gave the tape over to the uh, the prosecution. I mean, Shit. yeah. So it's gonna be. I don't know, man. I mean, the, the fact that it came out now, and not even last week is you know we will crazy. find out real soon I it mean, is it, r kelly untouchable why would he be he's been he ain't been to touch him nobody's been able to touch him he's been able to uh, seamlessly you know go from we know about the, everybody know about the leah thing he's been able to go you know um from situation to situation allegation to allegation virtually unscathed women still love him he's still in the concert he's doing his thing now he may be affected somewhat obviously you know, I'm not going to say that, but um, we, we saw the video where he said he may have made um, you know, um, was allegation that he made money off the Lifetime series. Remember, we played that on the yeah. podcast. That was him talking like so. I, you know, is our R. Kelly untouchable, Sam? Man, what do you think about that? Nah, man. Even though you make abs a lot of great points, I'm still going to say he's not untouchable. He's a black man, and we're going to find out soon. <laughs> it's not, right. and I don't know a black man in the world that's untouchable. <laughs> Bill Cosby sitting in jail right now, <laughs> and you hear the shit going on about Bill Cosby? I saw some of it. He's getting it in out there. I heard he's having a good time in jail. Get out of here. I heard he's having a good time. And he's well, a political prisoner, yeah. prisoner and he don't apologize. And he's MLK and Frederick Douglass. And yeah, yeah, he's over there. No filter. So Bill he just, Cosby. Now he'll give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be a celebrity in there and anywhere. Yeah, he's, I think he was in there playing. They didn't even play the Cosby show and shit. It's funny, but wow. R. Kelly, man. Um, The tape, if it comes out, he's done. I really believe that. But it, you got to look at it from different sides here because even though the, the lawyer is very prominent, like you said, there is a witch hunt. Or, or a soul they say it's a witch hunt out here and is he untouchable my bad i got kind of mixed up with the bill cosby no. is r kelly untouchable nah no. i don't think he's untouchable the whole Aaliyah situation i think was kind of thrown under the bus i think if Aaliyah's parents with all due respect to her parents would have pursued that a little heavier i think some action would have been taken out of that situation yeah i think because they were quiet everyone else was quiet so you would have to put that on on that situation right in regards to the tape i think that was just a bad a bad case in our judicial system it was fucked up i think right. i seen him i think it, it was clear as day that people thought it was him he got off i don't think he's untouchable that being said if this tape comes out and it's him i think he's done well yeah we'll see see the thing is like i think he he got a chance to really being done now the thing here i think is going to be the time like exactly when it was done because pretty much you know um the person pretty much is retaining took the, the tape to the lawyer i guess so i don't I, this is crazy this is crazy next step would be what him getting locked up if this is real and everything is is what it's they saying it is if next step is evidence. him getting locked if, up if they have enough evidence i guess whatever the evidence that we have to gather i don't know if a video evidence could get him oh, i say well, what would be enough evidence though i don't know i mean because he had they had a video before of him yeah. and they could you know couldn't bring him down so um i guess if they uh, they see him on the tape they seen it before that's what i'm saying mm. but if they see him on the tape let's just say mm. They will probably bring him in you know what i'm saying and um you know at least bring him in under a warrant and uh question him and whatnot i mean dna i don't know get vhs you right get that. and exactly so until right. then we ain't we can't speculate we can hear media stories up and down all day long but until r kelly gets arrested i think there is no tape mm, yeah pretty much at this point yeah, man. definitely man but you tune into the uncensored truth podcast with your brother old god and sam man going in today on this thursday we're going live tomorrow night at 8 p.m on the uncensored truth podcast we got a very special show lined up so make sure y'all tune in tomorrow you know um for that show now sam at uh we know that the documents came out the snitch papers came out of Takash 69 you know um i think it was yesterday um outlet started releasing them um now a lot of people are starting to be vocal you know one little boosie you know what I mean? Little Boosie doing his thing. So um, you sent me a um, clip earlier or um, a screenshot yeah. of what Little Boosie was talking about. Let's talk about that real quick. Man. Indeed, man. Well, we talked about we've we seen the papers come out and that ain't our that ain't the platform. None. Any three of them. We don't we ain't <laughs> dropping papers on these networks. We don't right. do that. We'll sit there and give context to the conversation. We talked about Takashi a couple of days ago and said there's nothing really more to talk about about him. He is what he is. 
mm-hmm. January 2020 when they seal his fate. We'll talk about it again. But this kind, this in particular, what Lil Booty said really struck my attention. We got to talk about it, man. So let me get to it. When you first went to jail, I was like, free dude, because I don't like to see no one in that cage like that. But one thing I don't condone or support is rats. You got to say you're a bitch ass nigga who was just playing whole games with everybody. You have to admit on wax that you a whole ass nigga from now on, period. And I do understand your situation, nigga. I was facing a needle, lethal injection, and I ain't been break or fold hashtag real niggas. Like myself, we hate rats. I don't know about New York, but in Louisiana, you would be murdered less than a month after your release. For real, for real. Your kids will be bullied in school for the decision you made. You will put all your family in grave danger for the life cause of this BS. Did you think about their safety? Keep it 100. You don't care about nothing, but you shake my head. And he also went on to say, if you don't understand what he was saying, you a rat. Whew. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, I 100% agree. And I, and I agree. I'm glad that he said it like that as we were talking you know, in the pre-production, a lot of times, you know, um, we can't come off like we want to, you know, like that, just because of a lot of different reasons. But Boosie, you my nigga for that, because that's real talk. And then the reason I say that is because this dude went around disrespecting, you know, everybody and they mama going to people's, you know, different areas. And, and they got this guy on tape, you know, putting 20 racks on people's heads. This dude lived that life. It is what it is. Ain't no saying, oh, he ain't living. He was just a little kid. Nah, he lived the life. And guys that live the life is supposed to go down with the damn shit. Mm -hmm. He ain't supposed to rap. Like my man Boosie said, he was involved in a a, um, a wild situation. He didn't bend. He didn't break. He didn't fold. He took it on the chin. Mm -hmm. Whatever was going to happen, he could have been dead now. But he's walking free right now because he stood up. So, you know what I mean? I don't respect him. And like Meek Mill was coming at uh, DJ Academics, you know, about, you know, still trying to promote this guy. Like, come on, this is whack. This dude's a fucking rat. A straight up squealing rat with a tail hanging out. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. He's done. He's, his credibility is totally shot. He was running with these dudes and whatnot. He was supposed to be this, you know, uh, quote unquote gang member. He's telling, inviting people to his private parts. He was this. He was that. As soon as he got pinched, he squealed like a rat. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Bootsy real quick, and then I'll get with the last extension of what you said, man, because I couldn't agree with Bootsy more as well. When you're dealing with that life and you're dealing with that situation, there's only one, two things come out of it. You're either going down with the ship or you're going down in the box. And those are the two realities you face when dealing with that situation and dealing with real adversity. There's no other way around it. Mm-hmm. Bootsy found himself in a situation. Thank God he did his time. He's out. A lot to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Respected throughout his life. He can walk around with his head held high. His name is still intact. You got it when you come out, because a lot of people out here are still promoting this fool. Once he comes out, like he's going to be a talent mm. because they got some unpaid bills that Uh-oh. they got to go ahead and check in on. We're going to get in on that. Uh-oh. But you can't, man. You, you you aren't allowed to have a career based off of this, that, and the third. Tell on everybody on your team and be able to earn an honest living from talking about that again. Never again. Not mm. allowed. Right. And fuck the people who promote them. Fuck the people who try to Ooh. fuck the people who try to gain money off of it because your time is soon to end because that's some corny shit. You need to start kind of putting some more relevance onto the platform and stop looking for a check. We got to hold ourselves a little more accountable, with a little more integrity. I'm not sitting here promoting that lifestyle. I'm not promoting the gang life. I'm not promoting any of that. If that's not you, need not apply. Mm-hmm. But if it is, you got to go in with the fucking shit. Yeah, you got to go down with it. I mean, you was out there propagating. You was trying to get cats hit. I mean, you on tape now. It's like, oh, I'm gonna cooperate, and I, I was this. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, Gordano, one of those, one of the mob, one of his daughters from the um, mob wise one. She was like, she understood because the dude that snitched on Gotti, whatever, I forget his last name. The people will help me, you know. I'm um, in the comment section. She was kind of like sympathizing, saying, you know, he was in a situation. His team turned against him. Nah, no, sit, no, in no instance is it cool to squeal like a rat. That's what he did. He gave it all up, and that's what you're going to be labeled. And, and again, Boosie made another point. Cats get killed for that. Families. People get killed for that. Fam- like you, you always, you know, e- even like the, the the young lady on the mile wire, well, not young now, but um, you know, she looked at it as a rat because that was a rat. She, let's let's you know talk about I mean? that part because there's a lot squeal, of people squeal. in the, there's a lot of people in the comment section that'll go, oh, but uh, you wouldn't rap because you did this, you did that, you did that, or, or, or he was going to do that to you. He fucked your girl. It's way beyond that, my dude. You right. got babies. You got families out here. It's way beyond you. 
once you sign yourself up for that life mm -hmm. and you got your family on the internet stupid and you got everybody out here for people to see and shit mm -hmm. and then you go and do some sucker shit like that so that you could get out because you ain't built like that right man there's no respect for you screaming gang gang now you want to rat no okay. respect for you. <laughs> and it's a shame because no one like you like like Bougie said in the beginning no one wanted to see you in that situation everyone i i vouched for you a couple times over here and caught flat for it yeah yeah a couple times you ride for six nine now nah, i don't say i wouldn't fucking ride for six nine <laughs> nah. but i vouched for a situation i thought i felt honest about no doubt this right here man you can't condone it yeah yeah it's a pretty you know um a sad situation you know as we know um but yeah man anyway that that is what it is with that situation i do wish that young man you know the best even though he read it I mean, you know, he's going to have to deal with the consequences of his actions. Just like if, if I did something, if you did something, if anybody did something, we're going to have to deal with the consequences. I'm sure where he came up at, which was Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. The, you know what I mean? He knows how rats are treated. You know what I mean? So that is what it is. Witness protection. Yeah. And another thing I was thinking, man, and, you know, when you when you briefly go through the docs, we, it might even. And I said this a long time ago, a few months ago when he was in Chicago. He may have been an informant the whole time. I didn't go to the docks. You, you know what I mean? He may he just may have been a, an informant the whole time or whatever, just to, to bring down the non trays. I'm just saying, I don't know. I mean, you know, more information to come out. You know, um, I don't know. Is it, you know, a lot of people, you know, speculate, you know, um, just go with a little conspiracy about a lot of people who are planted, you know, um, in the industry. You know, they do their you they do their damage and Oh, yeah, they go off to jail, but nobody ever hears and sees them again. You know, how you going to know? We ain't going to be in jail with them niggas. They over there somewhere in Wisconsin with a different idea. I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. That ended part makes sense. I'm like, damn, he should have got a better benefits package with that being a snitch. Because shit, you could still got to sit in jail. Like, <laughs> But OK, you might not even go to jail. They're going to take you on a bus and take you somewhere completely different. You taking these tattoos off and change your life. Right. Still. Takashi 6 9 Yeah. Six, you're done. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is, man. But you're tuned into the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Old God, and Sam, man. Going in today on this Thursday, everybody listening to this episode on YouTube, I need you to do me two favors. As always, hit that like button and make sure that you share this video. I'm going to turn our attention to the uh, the Gucci, you know, a controversy once again, because every time we think this is dying down, it brings new life now um we was kind of scrolling through instagram and um we uh seen ti you know ti you know um has something to say he put a picture up you know y'all see it on the screen of floyd mayweather and i guess somebody painted like the gucci black face 50 might have done that yeah shit. yeah 50 might have 50 is a funny dude man you know um and he put you know y'all see it under there i don't have to repeat it y'all see it on the screen there pretty much called him an f nigga and whatnot and um it's crazy because we seen that 50 cent you know he burned the gucci you know, um, I think it was a shirt, T some other yeah. and uh, some other stuff, you know, and it's just it's, just, it's a gesture. We understand the gesture. We even talked about it. it was like, yo, it'd be crazy if somebody went on there and burned it. Next day he burned it. But um, this T.I. man and Floyd Mayweather and a lot of people when Floyd Mayweather was uh, ran down by TMZ thought that he was kind of spite despite and spiting uh, T.I. when he um, said, I'm going into Gucci anyway, man, I'm going into Gucci. You know, what I mean, like a straight up zip. Mm -hmm. You can say the, the word after that. So. Mm -hmm. Salute to T.I., man. You, you, what do you think about this, though, Sam, man? T.I., you know, coming at Floyd Mayweather. Because I'm not mistaken, weren't you sympathizing a little bit with Floyd? Or? Hell no. We you talking about sympathizing <laughs> with Floyd? Ah, oh, but, no, that was Kodak. Oh, God, I was Kodak. And I was sympathizing <laughs> on that man's ignorance. <laughs> Shit, I can understand his ignorance. Nah, but um, <laughs> nah. You, well, we know these two. They, they, It's something personal there. And when he did that, he kind of did. I think he threw a shot at T.I., but what floyd didn't understand is you also took a shot at your culture you also took a shot at the people who care about you and in the lyrics of the song because i just listened to the song ti made a lot of good points you and and no one can tell you what to do with your money nobody but it's it's blatantly obvious that you're very insecure about yourself because all you do is flaunt what you have flaunt what you have won't flaunt what you have there's not an ounce of humility in you and that's cool that's you or whatever but when you look at a flint michigan when you're from grand rapids and their water's fucked up and you Ooh. have the money and the power to change that. Like T.I. alluded to. I'm not saying I'm from power phrasing off of T.I. You you can do something about that. Do it. When you got situations in just out here at home, when you could when you could build a school, we're coming to your ass. Oh, yeah. When we can uh, when you can do different things out here in the community and you don't, 
you deserve this kind of criticism, especially when you're rocking 18 million dollar chains, rings, that and the third. Now, you can see a number of other people out here flaunting their worth and flaunting this and flaunting that. But they also flaunt the amount of charity they work, the work they do, too. It's also some kind of giving back to that. And I think that's what T.I. was alluding to. Now, in Floyd's ignorance, he's probably going to come back just as rude. And I'm not going to sit there and repeat what I think Floyd's going to do because I'm a man about mine. That ain't that ain't supposed to be on the airways. But it's just Floyd's corny for that. And he deserved to be. We all know out. Floyd's next move is going to be. He might go to his wife and whatnot. But Dang. he's not going to address, you know, um, again, what T.I. was talking about you know um what exactly he did like and it's like again you could do whatever you want with your money but when you start speaking up like you're some type of activist and you're getting in the middle of what people are trying to do to just to spite them you know what i mean because you got a personal vendetta then you're you're on the chopping block mm -hmm. we can say whatever we want you know about you this guy is just a fool you know what i mean floyd mayweather and you know okay he got his money but money ain't everything you know what i mean and the money that you do got you could be doing so much more what people who do have are doing the best that they can so really you're worthless you know what i mean and the fool and his money will soon depart you saw 50 cent putting up the mean memes, memes and, and whatnot and saying yeah, i'm gonna buy that shit back when you, when you go broke and sell it back we see the pattern i mean people have had three four hundred five hundred million before and went broke mm -hmm. it can happen mm -hmm. you know i mean i'm not not that i'm wishing it on them but um that shit was silly man it almost felt like you want to punch the nigga in his face when he said that, like, oh, we trying to boycott. Well, I'm going in there. Well, fuck you then, nigga. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we, we trying to put something together. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, we're trying to put a rally together and march or something or whatever we're going to do and protest. And some niggas, oh, I mean, I'm still going up in there. I'm going to knock that nigga out. Yeah. You know what I mean? You Even though, it it, yeah, it's like, damn, like, you know, if, you, if you're going to do it, do it silently, but don't come on camera and make an ass out of yourself. Salute T.I. for uh, speaking up. We need I agree Just with as that. guys speak up, we need people to check them. Just like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So salute, salute. If you was going to go ahead and wear what you were going to wear, go ahead on your private time. Right. Make a spectacle out of it. Throw it on TMZ. Make it a headline. That was some buffoonery. You already know what. He was dancing and you deserve somebody it. Somebody put the red hat on this dude. <laughs> somebody else told, can you yeah. tell somebody to put a red hat on yesterday? Yeah, man. Damn. Definitely. Definitely. But you're tuned into the Uncensored Truth podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam, man. Going in today on this Thursday night. We're going in tomorrow night, man, 8 p.m. on the Uncensored Truth podcast. Make sure you're in the building. Sam, man, I know you want to talk about um, Steve Harvey and your girl, Monique. I think that was very, very powerful, the video that we watched. Right. Yeah, man. So I'm not going to play any of the audio because Steve Harvey likes to monetize yeah. his shit. But if you haven't seen the Steve Harvey Monique interview, go ahead and check that out now. Oh, God, you and I watched it together in a pre-production meeting real powerful now we had a lot of people on my twitter and shout out to all my twitter followers and people that support me on social media they wanted us in particular to talk about this topic right. and when i seen it i was like hey this is right up our will we got to talk about it now we all know the situation going on with monique being blackballed but she said about oprah will packer tyler perry and and, the, and steve harvey and who else steve harvey came on there and they tried to do some kind of mediation oh god what was your thoughts on the initial interview what, what was your thoughts on monique perspective steve harvey's perspective who did you agree with what side were you on in that in that conversation well as i'm as i'm going to going to speak to this i'm looking at an article and it says uh old stand-up surfaces of steve harvey saying he act like a monkey for four million dollars so um it, it's going to lead right into my premise you're going to have certain people you know um in this world you know um some of them are going to do anything for money some of them are going to you know uh, um be in, told what to do you know what I mean? Some of them want to bow down and be just the boot licking, whatever, whatever, for whatever reason. Now, I'm not putting Steve Harvey completely in that category, but when you when you listen to it, the essence of what Monique is saying is real talk. She's talking about equality. Nobody's ever talking about, you know, um, getting anything more than anybody. We're just talking about being treated equally. And she, you know, um, felt the way. And we should never. And this is one thing I never want to, you know, muffle anybody's freedom of speech. If you feel like you're being oppressed, you feel like something's wrong, you speak up. That's what we tell, you know, I tell our children. That's what I was taught. You speak up and make that vocal. So somebody's trying to tell you, Yo, just chill, be quiet. No, you got to do it this way. Nah, let people protest they, the way they want to protest because that's the way that she feels like she needs to do it. Right, wrong, or indifferent. But him trying to muzzle her and he really can, y'all watch the program, he really controlled the narrative. He let her speak, but he made sure, and reporters do this, they're real good at it. If you ever see them on TV, they'll cut you off and just come in and as a way to steer the narrative because it's their show. We got a guy sitting here, 
we can, you know, pretty much do what we want to do, even though we don't conduct our business like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, it's sad, man, to see, you know. Um, and my thing is, if you ain't gonna say nothing, don't if you ain't gonna do nothing, don't say nothing at all, but don't speak against me. And I think the fact that he tried to do that, he did it in the public, you know, I, I think it's sad. Sad. You know, this this reminds me of a conversation you and I had a, uh, maybe a month or a couple months ago involving Stephen A. Smith and LeBron James. Very, <laughs> very similar in conversation because um, in that conversation, Stephen A. Smith was saying that he was beginning to get worried about LeBron James because he's beginning to talk too much. He doesn't care mm -hmm. what people think. He's saying what he wants. That worried him. And the conversation we had was very powerful and it was a very split uh side to that situation a lot of people were agreeing with Stephen a a lot of people on lebron's side mm -hmm. it was interesting to watch the comments going in on there because a lot of people were agreeing with Stephen a smith in the premise of you're in uh, this a white man's world they could take it away from you they could do this they can do that which on the strength i can agree uh, i can understand i can't agree but i can understand you on that but what i feel eerily uncomfortable with and the same thing goes with this monique situation is how they're so easily ready to tell us that we can't be who we are. Mm -hmm. He right. said that your husband can't be who he wants to be. Why, Good point. Why not? Why not? Good point. Why the fuck not? Another thing that comes to mind, Michael Rubin, he's on the breakfast club and he's talking and he's getting it popping and he's really feeling it. And mm -hmm. he said, no one could touch me. I'm the owner of four private businesses. I'm this, I'm that. That's the arrogance of a European man that knows no one can fucking touch him. But you telling me I can't feel that way too? That's what I'm saying. Why not? That's the difference. Why not? And this is what I mean with LeBron. Shut up and just play basketball. <clears throat> no, 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 no. This man's close to being a motherfucking billionaire. Yeah, yeah. He'll be retired at the age of 40, which is nowhere near close to being the end of his life. Mm -hmm. When you got Jesse the body fucking Ventura, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Kane. You remember Kane, the big red yeah, machine? Yeah, I think he's doing, he has political office in Tennessee somewhere now. Okay, okay. And that's not where NBA Young Boy's from. I know Louisiana, shot to Louisiana. Right, right. But you got people that went from way worse than fucking NBA to sit there and hold political office, but you telling LeBron to shut up and play basketball? Yeah. Nah, there's something seriously wrong with that. That's right. Especially when you can have people, and this was your pair. You were a king of comedy. She was a queen of comedy. Mm -hmm. She could, uh, she'll out act and outwork your ass, do circles around you. Yeah. Monique's a very talented woman, and a lot of people right now are going to get caught up under the conversation that, oh, Monique's a, a this, Monique's a that. Let's take Monique out of the equation, and let's just put a, a very talented, strong black woman. She's not allowed to talk. Right. Come on. And that's man. sad, man. You know, um, we can't, we can't, we got to keep speaking out against that type of stuff. You know what I mean? We have to continue um, to speak out. Made some great points, you know, there. And, um, you know, I think, you know, this thing, you know, Monique, continue to speak out, you know, if you ever see this and we're going to continue to speak out. And that's we we always, um, you know, promote that. You know what I mean? So um, that's crazy. But I want to play this clip real quick, man. This is just to talk about this. This is crazy. This is popping up right here on my screen real quick. This is Steve Harvey, man. Um, I'm just going to play the video. For four million, I'll be all the motherfucking monkey you can stand. I'm Black people would be so embarrassed by my motherfucking performance, you'll be sitting up there just going, look at this big lip, son of a bitch. You ain't got to act like that much of a motherfucking monkey. <laughs> be picking shit off me looking at it. Be walking around at me. I be digging in my ass. Motherfucker for 10 million, kiss my ass. Motherfucker, I am a monkey. Mother <sighs> See what I mean? He said that for 10 million, he would do that. But how much is he worth? 140. Whoa! I was gonna, I, I was just thinking, yo, look, I was like thinking, look that up. So, you know what the up. thing is? He also said something that really, really gained my attention. He said, I think about my children, my grandchildren, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And she said, What about your integrity? Well, yes, Steve Harvey. Your children, your grandchildren, and everyone will be taken care of. And that's commendable. Generational wealth. We talk about it all the time. We're planting the seeds to do that ourselves. It's something very prideful. We've got the gardens, everything. We're, we're planting that. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the Harveys, and I don't mean to be any disrespect, but you have set the seed to always let people know that if you want to fuck one of them in the ass for a couple of dollars, they'll bend right over for you. Yeah, 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 definitely. What's the price? How much you want? How much? I'll do anything. I'll put on a dress. You know what I mean? Anything. And, That's um, what you did for yours. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I mean, we were thinking on the same page there. This is this is crazy, man. 
this is crazy that this, this comes out you know at this time um i'm almost speechless at this point this dude actually started making you know uh, um the, the monkey noises you know what i mean and we wonder why see people are not going to ever respect you you don't respect yourself do you think why you know what this is crazy because this mm -hmm. is I, and i remember this I, it was a stand-up and yep. now that i'm thinking about it as a kid i remember this um kings of comedy we know um bernie mac dl hugley cedric they were all doing their thing but bernie and steve weren't that cool they didn't like each other yeah do you think a lot of it had to do with that because oh, bernie yeah. was a real motherfucker. even cat williams you know we i think i got i know i got a video up with cat williams you know going, oh, in, going in on, on steve harvey um so it's just like yeah yeah a lot of people you know seeing you know what steve harvey was willing to do you know what i mean for the dollar and once somebody you get somebody like that around you it's almost like you know you got to kind of call them out because it's like you in certain situations where it's like they can you know put your life you know even in jeopardy you know to a certain extent with some of the decisions that these guys are make man because they're all about the dollar mm -hmm. so yeah man that is, this is this is sad man this is sad man and again if we don't respect ourselves people are never going to respect us that's why you got the you know these companies like gucci you know all these companies that continue to disrespect us because they know we're going to have people that's not first of all not not enough of us are going to care to boycott but you're going to have people who are actually going to be the buffer the buffer zone and actually defend this type of disturbing sick outrageous behavior steve harvey you probably will never see this but if your people do you ought to be ashamed of yourself man real talk and you need to sit down and we don't we need more you know uh um real people to ascend to the media i'm tired of these guys like stephen a smith steve harvey you know moving up and we know why but that's why you got to do it independently because when you do it independently they like michael rubin shit. they can't say shit. they can't stop you okay i'll go over here i'll go over here i'll go over here but you can't stop me i got my own money i pay my own employees when you work for the man you got to do what the man say dame dash independence man yes. independence and, man and the tough one dame talk. go ahead go now you go ahead do you think? yeah you you can't speak against that but go ahead that's all i wanted to say to speak on dame dash and it's just to kind of close the show yeah no doubt it takes a real man to say i'm sorry it takes a real woman to say i'm sorry but it also takes a real woman and a real man of integrity to not say i'm sorry and steve harvey asked that woman to say i'm sorry for going on stage and saying to suck my you know what to them three while she was at her job doing her thing, the same stage that you went and just said you was Chuck, Job, Woo! Monkey, and Coon to go and I said the C word. I, we promised ourselves, God damn it, we wasn't gonna it say that. It is. Show. You weren't gonna go up. You were gonna go ahead and do that. You wouldn't apologize for that. Don't tell that woman to apologize to do what she do. Mm -hmm. She's better than you at her job. Yeah, definitely. That is what it is, man. But that's another episode of the Uncensored Truth Podcast in the book, episode one hundred and sixteen. And all less than one year, man, we are working over here. We got a dynamic, dynamic program lined up tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on the Uncensored Truth podcast. We're going to be responding to the Dr. Umar Johnson alleged school purchase. Alleged, I say alleged because we still haven't seen any proof tomorrow. So I'm um, definitely excited about that. I just got a message on my Instagram today. Well, we were in the middle of somebody asking, when are you going to respond to Umar on Hip Hop Uncensored? So we've been getting yeah. it all week. Yeah. And we see it. We go on our own time. Yeah. And tomorrow's the time, Friday evening at 8. You're not going to want to miss it. We usually yeah. go for about an hour on the Uncensored Truth on Friday night. We'd be chilling. But tomorrow, now the gloves are off. We're going to have it open. It might be two. It might be two. Yeah. We'll have the phone lines open. We got some special guests in the building. Yeah. We're going to have a good show, man. Y'all get ready. The gloves are coming off. Yes, sir. With that note, man, Uncensored Truth Podcast. Make sure you subscribe, like, share. We out of here. We out of here. Peace.